here's the cenote behind us where it meets the ocean. You can see the ocean over here. Cenote stretches back there. There's a lot of people in the water. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard. All electronic devices. You can off. Thank you. Hola, buenos dias. We just left the hotel, or not the hotel, the Airbnb actually, and dropped off our laundry. First time we are doing laundry since we left the state. So that's like what? A little over a week. Yeah, a little over a week. Pretty good for, you know, just traveling out of small suitcase and backpacks. And for all that laundry, I think it was 5.3 kilos which was 69 Mexican pesos. So roughly $3, something like that. And we gotta go pick it up later on tonight. Yep, and they do everything for you. They wash, they dry, and they fold it. So pretty convenient, and you don't need to find a hotel or Airbnb to do it yourself. You can just have them do it. It's really affordable. Yeah, I've noticed most Airbnbs here don't have a washing or a washer or a dryer in the units because there's just so many, what do they call them, lavenderia? Yeah, laven lavenderia or lavendria or something like that. Um, like every corner there's one. <laughs> yep, they're all over the place, so definitely uh, easy service. But for now, we're gonna fill the time by going down towards the beach. Even though the beach isn't very nice and not pleasant to kind of be at because of the seaweed issue, there's supposed to be part of the beach where there's a cenote that joins the beach or kind of meets the beach. I don't know how well of a cenote it is. Uh, on Google Maps, it kind of just looked like a place where the ocean just washes inland a little bit further. So we're gonna check that out, see how that is. But on the way, we're gonna grab some coffee, maybe a quick bite to eat. We'll see what we find. left a little cafe restaurant place and that food was muy bien. It was so good. Uh, what I had was the two Mexican eggs with the side bread, the tortilla underneath, green sauce, red sauce, and some beans with cheese. And it was just so good. The green sauce was my favorite part of the whole thing. It topped really well on the egg. Also, they gave us two complimentary creme brulees, which was really nice. I had uh, some fresh tropical fruit, delicious, and a little yogurt on the side. It was very good, refreshing, just what I needed on this hot, hot day. 
fruit was super, super fresh. I had a couple pieces and it was definitely really good. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really too big of a fruit yeah. person, but it was on point. Yeah, it was definitely, they weren't chintzy. Usually when you get like a little fruit bowl, they're little tiny grapes and apples and you know, kind of not the best, but man. And we had the two coffees, the ice lattes, and he also brought us two balls, like as like a dessert. Vegan like, balls. Yeah, they were filled with chocolate and other stuff, coconut. Mm -hmm. They were vegan. Yeah. He said it's made in-house, like the from the cacao bean and everything. They like make and ground everything up themselves. Yeah, super, super good. Mm -hmm. And those weren't complimentary. We had to pay for those, but that's okay. But for my plate, I ordered. For her plate, she ordered the two coffees, the two creme brulees, and the two balls. The total came to 390 pesos with a little tip added on. So it was just a little bit more than $20, I think, or so. Great way to start the day. So that little breakfast brunch spot, the name of it's called Soa or Koa or however you pronounce it. It is C O A. Restaurante, and I definitely recommend you check it out. And now we are headed towards the beach to see that cenote that meets the ocean there. All right, we have made it here. Finally, Playa Punta Esmeralda. Let's go see what it is all about. All right, here's the cenote behind us, where it meets the ocean. You can see the ocean over here. Cenote stretches back there. There's a lot of people in the water, and we're just gonna kind of walk around it and see how it feels. Cool off for a bit. So my guess is this is where the locals come if they don't have a pool and they live nearby. The water is very springish looking. It's very clear. I think it's fresh water. It's cold. It might be running from uh, inland somewhere. I'm not really too sure. But locals definitely enjoying it. The little kids love it. It's not very deep, maybe a few feet or so. Uh, definitely nice to just put your feet in and kind of walk through. You could sit in it, get your your shorts and bikini all sandy and whatnot. <laughs> but the worst part about it is you have to deal with the smell of the seaweed. There's also like a little stand over here where people are selling some drinks and some refreshments and little snacks. So if you come here, you can buy something to eat, some local authentic Mexican food and drinks, which is pretty cool. There's also a few, uh, seaweed workers, the guys that are scooping up the seaweed, I think passed out drunk. Cool little area. If the seaweed wasn't an issue, I think it would be much better here. So there's also some little huts and chairs and tables that you can come and sit at and drink some nice little beach drinks, some alcohol, snack on some food, get away from the sun and the heat for a little bit. And if you're daring enough, there's a few palm trees around here with some coconuts on them. Maybe try to scale them, take a coconut or two, hack it open with a machete, and there you go. You got yourself a authentic Mexican coconut on the beach for free. Don't tell anyone I told you to do that. I think that's gonna conclude it for checking out Punta Esmeralda. We just wanted to see what it was like, kind of take a walk through and see if it's definitely worth coming here right now, but in all honest opinion, eh, I think I would rather wait to when the water is a little more clear, less seaweed, a better smell in the area. You know, probably the colder months of the year in the spring and in the fall. If you are here in Playa del Carmen, come check it out. You should see what it's like. So now I think we're just gonna head back to the Airbnb and hop in the pool, cause it is hot today. I think it's like, what, 90 degrees Fahrenheit? Yeah. The sun was definitely out for a while. There's a huge cloud over us right now, so that's a good a thing. 
We're definitely uh, getting away from the sun for a bit. And uh, yeah, I think we'll continue the day at the pool, like she said, and just kind of lounge and we have to wait for our laundry to be done. But that's gonna finish it on the video here. Just wanted to give a good walk through here and show you uh, one of the closest cenotes that meets the beach. Um, I don't know. Distance. Yeah, I don't know if I would really call it a cenote. It more just seems like where the water dumps into the ocean, like an estuary or something. But uh, hey, if you got nothing to do, it's free. Come in here, check it out, hang out with some friends, drink some cervezas or some margaritas or something. And uh, yeah, we will catch you in the next video. It's like if you took the inside part of a kiwi and that's the whole fruit. It's like chocolatey, but like a different kind of chocolatey. I can't explain it. It doesn't taste fake. So we just turned down this street that's pretty close to where we gotta go and it's inaccessible over here because they're removing seaweed. It's washing up here and there's quite a bit of it. It's very stinky. So we're gonna have to go back down the road and take another road and try to get down to the other side because we just can't walk down the rest of the way by beach, which we were trying to do. Probably not even a meter deep. Um, I don't really know the meter to foot translation there, so maybe that's the same thing or maybe not, but 